Hey everyone and welcome to The Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party causing all your friends to question, hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why were you here? I am your host Michael Montalvo and for the next few minutes we will swim through the river of time to try and find out what makes today truly unique. In this episode we examine the events that occurred November 23rd. Because we are in a holiday week, that week of course being Thanksgiving, I thought that instead of focusing on a single topic, we would do one of those episodes where I pick multiple things to talk about so I don't have to A, do as much research on a particular topic, if that were even possible, and B, I could write less on the topic because there are more of them to talk about and we really only have to fill up about 7 minutes. So... Here we go. Let us first look at the first chronological item and talk about Robert Johnson. In the world of blues, Robert Johnson is often listed among the best of the best. Born May 8, 1911, probably, to parents Julia Major Dodds and Noah Johnson. And while we don't know much about his biological father... We do know that the majority of his early years were spent in Robinsonville, Mississippi, with his mother and stepfather, Dusty Willis. According to Britannica, it was around this time that he learned to play harmonica and guitar. By 1929, he had married 16-year-old Virginia Travis, but she would die in childbirth the following year. This sent him in a bit of a funk. It was around this time that he allegedly made a deal with the devil. According to legend, Johnson made the deal at a crossroads. He gained exceptional skills musically, songwriting and guitar playing, in exchange for the stipulation that he would only have eight years left to live. In truth, he probably gained his musical ability while under the instruction of Ike Zinnemann. He began to play around Arkansas and Tennessee, New York and Chicago at house parties and bars and camps until eventually... The year was 1936, and on this day, November 23rd, blues musician Robert Johnson began his first recording sessions in San Antonio, Texas. According to TheCurrent.org, it was at the Gunter Hotel, room 414. It was a temporary recording studio set up by Brunswick Records, and it is said that Johnson played 16 selections facing the wall. This was done to enhance the sound of the music, or maybe it was done because he was shy. One of the songs recorded in this session was Terraplane Blues, which became a moderate hit, selling 5,000 copies. Johnson died August 16, 1938, eight years after his supposed deal with the devil, from drinking poisoned whiskey in a juke joint. Despite having a relatively short career, his influence on blues musicians has been monumental, and he was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame in its inaugural class of 1980, and then into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. Next up is the story of Poon Lim. We have talked about people who have sailed the sea with Thor Heyerdahl and Jessica Watson, but in those cases it was done to further the cause of discovery and adventure. Poon Lim was born in China in 1918, but his family moved to Malaysia while he was still pretty young, 10 years old. It was there he found work in the fishing industry. And that's actually about the extent of what I could find about his early life. So let's jump to 1942, where Poon Lim was drafted into the Chinese Merchant Marines and began his work as a steward aboard the SS Ben Lomond, a British ship that was transporting supplies from Southeast Asia to Australia. The ship was sluggish and barely armed, and for some reason it was sailing away from other friendly ships. This would actually prove to be its downfall, and the year was 1942, and on this day, November 23rd, the SS Ben Lomond was attacked by German U-boats and sunk. The boat went down, but not everyone lost their lives. Of the 55 crew members, 11 were saved by other ships. And while these 11 were found in rafts in what I assume was fairly close proximity to the wreckage, Poon Lim did something a bit different. 
He grabbed a life jacket and jumped into the ocean and just started swimming. The only problem was he wasn't great at swimming. But it was kind of like Forrest Gump, except instead of running, it was just swimming. He swam for two hours until he saw a wooden raft that he eventually boarded. The raft had minimal supplies and it became apparent that the supplies would soon run out. He had to be resourceful and he began to use everything in the raft to his advantage. The canvas from his life jacket caught and channeled rainwater and small fish hooks were fashioned from the wire on a small electric stove. He was able to fish and dry and cure his catches until a storm blew through and all his stored food and water was lost. He began to grow weaker and the end seemed near. Then he noticed flying fish landing near his raft and after managing to catch one, drank its blood and then attempted to fish for birds as well as fish. The trouble with this plan, however, was that the bird blood he was drinking was attracting sharks and the sharks were scaring away any potential fish. He would go on to eventually use this to his advantage though, and he caught sharks, pulling them from the water, fighting them until they submitted. Then something changed. Poon Lim would later say he knew he was close to land because the water's hue drastically changed. Three fishermen located his raft and rescued him. In total, he had been lost at sea for 133 days and had lost 20 pounds, but he made a full recovery after spending four weeks in the hospital. Now, this isn't to say he didn't see other ships during his time at sea. He actually did see a few, and surprisingly, a few saw him. They just either ignored him, or he failed to get their attention, or he drifted too far away from the location that they spotted him. Poon Lim eventually immigrated to the United States where he died January 4th, 1991 at 72. Before I end this episode, I thought I would share this. The year was 1963, and on this day, the British sci-fi show Doctor Who made its debut. I will go into Doctor Who a bit more in a later episode, but I do want to briefly mention that the first episode had to be repeated the following week due to news reporting on the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Also, did you know that they've actually revealed the doctor's name only once throughout the course of the entire show? The doctor's name is Idona. I don't know who. That's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out, helps steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Price Band for our musical theme. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.